32 pulling, 33 pulling. Oh shoot, I think that cop's coming. This folding fat tire electric bike has a claimed range of 70 to 90 miles. We'll see about that on today's 18 mile test ride on the tail heavy circuit. Champion! It's my calling. I feel so much better being out here doing this. It has a 750 watt motor and a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery pack. But do not buy the Vitania Pika just yet. We gotta crack this thing open, take a closer look at it, take it out for a full review and see whether or not it's worth the money. 27, Nice. So it is a hard tail, meaning there is no suspension on the rear, but we do have a suspension seat post. Here's what the seat will look like. And the wheels are 20 inches tall, four inch wide knobby fat tires. Not like the lightest wheel, but these are definitely way lighter than 26 inch tall wheels. And since they are spoke wheels, that helps keep the weight down. Brake rotors are 160 millimeters. It appears we will not have a quick release to easily remove the front wheel. So if you want to load it up in a car, it'll be an extra 6.8 pounds. That'll be a little bit harder to take off. And we'll check the official weight of this bike after we get all the packaging off. Fatanya. Pika. So this one comes in green, but there is another color linked below the video in the description box. Rear rack comes installed, making the build process a little bit easier, and it does have some mounting points on top, as well as a tail light built into it, which is wired into the big old frame integrated battery. You can choose to charge your battery either on the bike or off. You wanna pop it off, you turn the key here, and pops right up. Of course, this whole frame folds in half, which I'll show you in a minute, but first, let's take a closer look at this color matched battery. It is listed as a 20 amp hour 960 watt hour 48 volt Samsung cell battery. Always good to see quality cells on a battery. And I feel like this is probably going to max out our 11 pound max scale. Oh yeah. Error. So the big boy scale says it weighs 12. .2. That's 12.2, not 122 pounds. And on the Pika, that 960 watt hour battery will power a Vitania branded 48 volt, 750 watt nominal hub drive geared hub motor. We do have hydraulic brakes, no brand listed, with the same 160 millimeter rotor on the rear. This e-bike has a quick adjust seat clamp, so you can easily adjust your 30.6 millimeter seat post. That's a number you might want to know in case you want to swap out your seat post for a different suspension seat post. This one looks pretty basic. Fenders are plastic typically a little bit lighter than metal ones and also make less noise from rocks clinging up on it. Plastic fender up front too. And a suspension fork on front. Here's your mounting points up front to put a rack on. And there's also mounting points here for a water bottle holder. Of course you have your preload adjustment on the left stanchion and the right stanchion has a basic open or lock feature with no adjustability in between the two. And just like every e-bike you can fold at this point as well as the handlebars also fold. It appears this folding e-bike does not have an adjustment to raise and lower the handlebars. Here's how the latching mechanism works. Which, speaking of handlebars, I'm noticing they are fairly narrow. The MC7 display is already installed. We have ergonomic hand grips bolted in place so they won't rotate. And they got the little bubble thing on there. A little extra ergonomic comfort there. Thumb throttle will be operated on the left side. There's a little rubber pad on there. Can adjust our pedal assist modes right here. And hidden down yonder, there is a USB port. Standard USB, that is. Typical Shimano derailleur with seven gears. Headlight switch, horn switch, we'll hear in a moment. And these hydraulic brake levers look exactly like an unbranded tech lever to me. Got a good feel to it. Headlight comes plugged in with a reflector on bottom in case you run out of battery. Probably pop that front tire on there before we take it out. Easy peasy. And if you don't have your own tools, they do give you tools to build this thing. Along with a user manual for riders and folding pedals for a folding electric bicycle. It actually does save you just a little bit of space. Usually don't feel quite as crisp as a normal pedal. And of course that box also contains our all important lithium ion battery charger, which this one is a three amp charger. A 48 volt battery charged to max is 54.6. 20 amp hours divided by three amp charge rate. So about 6.6 .6 hours to charge from completely empty to completely full. So I'll top that battery off as red. It'll turn green when it's completely full. So you'll use the 15 millimeter wrench to bolt that front wheel down. Front fender is on. Headlight goes here. Fender on, light on. Let's see how much this thing weighs. Let's see how much I weighs. 199.2, I'm doing good. So let's pick this thing up without the battery in it, step on the scale, see how much I weigh. 261 pounds. So that'd be about 63 pounds without the battery and about 12 more. Let's pop that in. Wait, let's not pop it in yet. Cause if you're gonna fold this thing up, you wanna keep that weight down, you know, if you're gonna load it up. So in case you haven't seen one of these latches before, you just kinda push that button down, pull it out. Careful on your paint, seems somewhat durable. Now the whole thing can just kinda fold in half. 
is a fat tire e-bike. This kind of goes like that. The whole thing folded up has a footprint that looks right about like this. So if you want to load it up into an RV or a car or something, the weight is manageable, but not featherweight. It'd be nice if there was a quick release on the front tire. Reduce the weight seven more pounds. And when you get to your destination, you just kind of pop it on out and boom. Add that 12 pound battery up in there. Locks in place. Give it a little pat for encouragement to get you where you want to go. And then you press this M button right here to turn on the screen. We do get a color screen. Speed is indicated right here, front and center. Looks like battery life is determined here by these bars. Looks like we're about halfway charged. Pedal assist is there. Total miles. Tap that M button and it will show us our trip. Voltage of the battery. So. Uh, 46.8 that's uh, probably about 40 percent charge or so right now always good to see voltage down here a little bit more precise if you know your stuff compared to these rather ambiguous bars and button again shows the current so uh, current output of the battery that would be measured in amps so amps times voltage is the wattage kind of gives you an indication of how much power you're outputting seems like a fairly decent display shows time miles and then obviously you can uh, adjust your pedal assist from zero on up to five advanced settings can usually be found by holding plus and minus so some cryptic stuff but that's what your user manual for riders is and as we can see up there on the wall the headlight is on there's a button right here to Turn it on and off, and then we have a horn. Meow, <laughs> meow. <laughs> Doggy's probably really confused inside there. Here's what the headlight looks like from the front. And around back, we have a light that turns on and off with the headlight. Grab that brake lever, and we get a brake light. If the headlight's not on, that's still your brake light, just like that. So the back brake is on the right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> just messing with you guys. Or am I? We'll get this thing flipped around. So I can show you the other side. They give us seven gears on a Shimano cassette. Can't quite see the Shimano back there. And there's a Shimano Tourney TZ derailleur. No derailleur guard installed on this bike, so careful not to knock this thing over and mash that up. Up front, the chain ring has a guard on each side to help keep that chain on there. In case you're doing some hardcore off-roading. Do make sure that you uh, flip this little guy around there to make sure that thing stays closed. And we're about to get this out for a ride. But first, let me show you what I look like size-wise on this bike. I am six foot five, insane 34, if you have not seen any of my videos. Seat is on minimum height. Handlebars are not adjustable. On minimum height, here's what my pedal stroke would look like on this electric bicycle. And let the seat crank all the way up to maximum height. Of course, we do have the step-through frame and the shorter 20-inch wheels, which makes it pretty easy for a shorter individual to get on this bike. But see, on maximum height, here's what I'm looking like on this bike. and what my pedal stroke would look like. So, let's go do the thing. All right, dudes, let's check out the Batania. Pikachu, Pika, for a ride. Of course, I got that battery topped off. 54.8 volts on the big old 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack. We'll track our official range today on our Strava app. So let's get to it. Whoa. <laughs> Think pretty torquey. We'll try out that headlight. I'm noticing it does not change the uh, brightness of the display when you turn it on and off. And riding into the dark tunnel here, here's about how bright it is. And of course, the very first test we're gonna do is run this thing up to 20% grade. I weigh about 200 pounds. We'll put on pedal assist five and do thumb throttle only. No pedaling, this thing feels very torquey. About pop the wheel off the ground there. And it's pulling us up the 20% grade, doing about seven miles an hour, no pedaling at all. Ooh, I can tell these are 160 millimeter brakes. Levers feel nice. Holy crap, man, getting out here, I cannot even see this display on this bright, beautiful, sunny day here in Southern California. So I'm guessing it's not gonna help to throw on my polarized sunglasses, which usually makes it a little bit less visible. Actually, you know, it really didn't change it too much. So I'm gonna switch this on over to the current mode down here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it very well or not. And we'll put this thing on pedal assist zero. So, I mean, you know, if your your battery dies on this bike, you'll be able to get it home. I forget what the exact weight was I said. Yeah, it's fine once you get it rolling. But let's throw this thing on pedal assist uh, one, start pedaling it, and oh yeah, this thing's got a little bit of juice in it. Powerful feeling bike. Pedal assist one takes us up to 13. We'll get out the GPS here in a minute here. So it is a cadence sensor. It doesn't matter how hard you're pressing on the pedals. I'm already on top gear of seven. Actually, I could switch it down to about gear number three. I'll be turning them over pretty quickly though. Gear number five feels, uh, you know, like a, a good cadence. And we'll blip that on to pedal assist two. Start pedaling a little bit. 
cadence sensor has about a second lag until it ramps on that power. And we are in top gear seven already hitting 18. And pedal assist three, we'll bump it on up. Now, after about 20 miles an hour, I really, I'm starting to run out of uh, cadence. So I'm gonna switch over to holding down the throttle here on 22.6 on pedal assist three. Let's bump it back on down to pedal assist one, slow it down and then hit the throttle. Uh, does it have limits for the throttle? Yes, so pedal assist one on throttle only will hold us at 13. And then obviously pedal assist two will take us up to pedal assist two speeds, throttle only at about 16, 17 miles an hour. And we have cruise control on this e-bike, awesome. So I let off the throttle, you just gotta hold it down for what, probably two, three seconds. And you don't gotta pedal, you don't gotta throttle, you can just cruise, bro. And probably the first thing I noticed getting on this e-bike is just like how narrow these handlebars are. And then also they're not like adjustable height. A lot of times on a folding, electric bike the frame falls in half and then the handlebars will also fold in half as well as adjust up and down so they are the handlebars on this one are kind of just like a middle of the road height for a taller dude like me when i have the seat on max height it'll put me in a position where i'm more capable of putting power down to the pedals and then on pedal assist three let's roll this thing off road so we do have the 20 by 4 inch wide fat tires there's a suspension seat post uh, you know, it's a super budget friendly basic one, uh, not making much of a difference there, but the big fat tires do. And then it does have that uh, front fork on there. There is no adjustments, you either lock it out or unlock it. It's pretty soft spring. So if you're doing a lot of off-roading, you'll probably bottom it out. Let's get out here and ride this thing on the road and bump this thing on Palisades 4. And it looks like the right lane is closed ahead. So we're going to go on and merge on into traffic here. Palisades 4 on throttle only will take us up to 20. 25, 27 actually on pedal assist four throttle only. I'm not pedaling anymore. Really can't keep up with the pedaling. There's only seven gears on this bike and yeah, ghost pedaling. We'll try pedal assist five in a moment. Actually pedal assist four will take us to 22. We were on a downhill and it uh, cruise controlled us at 27. That's awesome. So definitely fast enough bike to get out here, whip with traffic just a little bit, passing the uh, turbo diesel Cummins. Maybe we can catch this moped up here, dude. Let's bump this thing on five. So I'm noticing the current meter for whatever reason is not registering. And we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a zero to 20 acceleration, uh, throttle only. I weigh 200 pounds. GPS on the right hand, which will lag just a little bit. Ready, go. So instant power. Uh, yeah, current is not showing anything. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, what? 18, 19. Uh, so it cruise controlled. So the cruise control, I think, uh, kind of inhibited our zero to 20 run there. So ready, go. And 16, 17. So it kind of tapers the power at about 20. One more try here, full throttle. So it's powerful, 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 powerful. And then I think it cruise controlled. So then I tap the brake, throttle again. And 20, and it was cruising again. So there is a setting in the manual that we could turn off that cruise control. Maybe we'll get in there later. Good thing we slammed on the brakes here. We got a motorcycle cop. <laughs> and to talk about the power on this bike, uh, it feels like actually like super zippy and punchy. And then it just kind of like tapers off after you get up to about 15. Probably helps save on the battery, we'll see. Woo! Looks like the motorcycle cops are out writing tickets today. Let's whip this thing around, do a top speed run. All right, dudes, top speed run on this thing. Full throttle. I think it's set up as like a class three e-bike, so throttle will stop us at about 20 miles an hour. And then I'm just gonna start ghost pedaling now. So let's flip the brake, make sure cruise control is not on. Ghost pedaling hitting 21, 23, 25, still pulling hard, 26 on the GPS, 27 on the GPS, 28 on the GPS, 29 on the GPS, 30 on the GPS. Okay, so this thing goes up 31 on the, 32 on the GPS. Okay, so this thing goes a little faster than I was expecting, 33 on the GPS. So a class three electric bike should top out, you know, uh, 28 miles an hour. Looks like it says 28, 29 on the onboard and 32 pulling, 33 pulling strong, dude. So, you know, I'm saying this thing felt like powerful, man. And it is 
It's a powerful fat tire e-bike that is uh, legal. Oh shoot, I think that cop's coming. Duck out of here, parking entrance down here. Oh nice, we have a EV charger down here. So that cruise control feature is pretty cool, but you can get into the menus here, press and hold the plus and minus button, and then get on over to 17. Wait a second. It says that it's not enabled. All right, I don't know how to turn it off then. So I'm not sure how to turn off the cruise control because I, I flipped that switch and uh, we're still cruising, which is cool. So of course we'll get out there and try it on the flat sand here shortly, but I always like to run it up this hill here first to uh, see how it'll do. Throttle only and yep, made it right up. So this does have a suspension seat post on the rear that's probably cost about a dollar. Oh my goodness, that is quite harsh. Uh, you know, I'd say if you're looking for something uh, riding off-road, upgrade that suspension seat post or go full suspension or just don't take it on anything too crazy. So we're going to go ahead and ride this over the boardwalk, see how this feels, and then take it out in the sand. It's not really terrible, honestly. Get out on the sand here and we'll do a little bit of ghost pedaling here just to make sure this thing is... Uh, putting out the absolute maximum power. I'm actually not even like pressing on the pedals at all. Just kind of like rotating uh, my legs just a little bit here. And this is rolling on 20 inch tall wheels. Generally a 26 inch wheel will do a little bit better on the sand, but we can see that this is powering through. I wish that it would show us the current level. Uh, it's just outputting zeros on the board there. Let's bring it down here to a little bit harder pack sand so you know it does have the four inch wide knobby tread so we are uh golden there and we'll gun it see if we can make it up this hill here not not pedaling i might be running yeah i'm not pedaling we're we're making it up so respectably strong powerful 750 watt nominal power electric bike oh yeah we're just uh cruise control on this dude seven miles an hour on the soft flat sand <laughs> light steering this thing is like understeering <laughs> just popped out here to do a little b-roll get some photographs but spring is in the gear dude whether it's this e-bike or not you gotta get yourself an e-bike if you're on the fence thinking about getting one riding season is here man it's gonna take a little bit for it to ship to you and you gotta build it well, that'll only take a few minutes, but on that first nice spring day, you're going to want to have yourself an e-bike, so get yourself one. What's happening, Jam? Champion. People on my channel, they want a little interview with you. They'd like to know more about Who's you. Who's that? With all that stuff you, they've already got, I haven't got a single penny of any of this stuff. I come down here for Burbank. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm retired. I'll be 70 in October. Oh, cool. So, uh, you know, I might get a Social Security and pension check. All right on. Well, I, I shut off the TV a couple years ago. I just don't have the time. I feel... So much better being out here doing this. Heck yeah, man. I started out doing this just for cardio and it just, yeah, yeah. It just exploded. I don't know, I guess uh, it's my calling. Move, move off so they can give the- Oh uh, yeah, for uh, sure. I got a uh, health book. I'm kind of an expert on uh, good health. Maybe that's why you see what you see here is because I started early. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, You're that's right, what they dude. Call, that's what they call, they call that. It's not, I'm not a, uh, one of those uh, age or uh, uh, it just, you start early. But oh, that's it's, awesome. You're 70 out here just riding like all the time. I see you out here. It took a while to get used to doing this. Champion! Glucosamine rebuilds cartilage. Glucosamine, all it is is chopped up seashells. And you got to get the MSM in there too. Yeah, they yeah. used to use MSM on uh, racehorses when they would throw a, a ligament out, million dollar horse, and use it for stud. I mean, you get. Oh, another yeah. champion or two on it. Yeah, get another well, champion just, or two. I don't use stuff that's been processed. Nice to meet you, okay, man. Yeah, let's do I'll, that I'll see you around. Yeah, well, I'm here every day. Oh, what do you guys think? You guys asked for it. I'm here to deliver. Champion. I guess about time we go do the California incline. It's going to be an 85 foot climb up to the top of there. And we're sitting at 50.2 volts right now. It shows a full charge. We'll crank this thing up to pedal assist five and throttle this thing up the circular incline. And of course, you know, We'll try the brakes out at the bottom of the California incline. So full throttle here from the base. We are doing six, seven, eight. Cut off for a second. And nine, 14. Make sure that cruise control doesn't kick on. Shot about 14, 15 miles an hour. Still accelerating 15.4. So it's topping out about 15.6 almost 16 miles an hour up the california incline which you can do on throttle only 
no pedaling at all. Enjoy these beautiful views for about one second before we test out the brakes. Full throttle downhill, put a little ghost pedal in. So we are only running 160 millimeters on our hydraulic brakes. Back brake is on the left, 27. Woo so they are shorter 20 inch wheels with spoke wheels so they're a little bit lighter than like mag wheels or a taller 26 inch wheel linear braking force feels uh actually plenty powerful enough on these so here's a quick little brake test from about 20 miles an hour yeah solid brakes bro definitely a decently torquey bike though check this out you can kind of pop a wheelie oh yeah <laughs> it's not like a wheelie monster but uh most e-bikes aren't so wheelie happy. So we are showing 47.5 volts on this thing. Let's head on home, check the final range, and I'll share my final thoughts along the way. So overall, pros and cons on this. Uh, I wish that it did have adjustable handlebars. You know, I have six foot five. It'd be nice if I could bump them up a little bit higher. It's a pretty typical feature we see on folding electric bikes, not this one. I do wish that the screen brightness could turn up just a little bit brighter so I could see it a little better on a bright sunny day like today. And I'd have to say the suspension seat post uh, kind of looks more like a suspension seat post rather than actual suspension it doesn't really feel that great i'd probably swap that out for something of higher quality if this was my daily rider pros of this e-bike this is a pretty darn powerful feeling electric bike i mean it it's ready to pop that front wheel off the ground if you get on that throttle especially from like a slow speed so it's got a lot of torque pretty powerful and it does have that 48 volt 20 amp hour samsung cell battery so it's always great to see name brand cells on an e-bike battery it is one of the most important parts of your e-bike and the fact that it is 20 amp hour uh, that's pretty darn big for an e-bike so all around it is a pretty solid e-bike and you can see the uh, price of it in the link below this video in the description box any discount i can offer you will be down there and if you do decide this is the e-bike for you if you did buy through that link down there it would help support my reviews and of course i greatly appreciate your support so let's go check the final range oh, this is what i call cruising dude all right the speed trap's up here like like goes ahead uh okay we'll get in here what a windy weedy oh gosh fat tires coming in handy here dude <laughs> man e-bike for the win today dude this is laying really even close all right dudes just crossed over 19 miles hour 25 minutes ride time average speed 13.36 a little bit faster than typical a little bit longer than typical not by much and the battery here is showing three out of five bars and the voltage is showing 47.5 volts so roughly half the battery was burned through in about 19 miles on throttle only 200 pound dude so pretty typical performance out of you know samsung cell 20 amp hour 48 volt battery so you should get some pretty big range out of this thing throttle only you might be able to hit about 40 miles on flat surfaces all around pretty solid electric bike if you do want to grab one buy it through the link below in the description box use my code down there help save you a little bit of money and get the best price on it and also help support my reviews here on tail happy tv and i'd greatly appreciate your support if you do pick this bike up however if this is not the kind of electric bike you're looking for watch this video next dude catch you over there